Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about what are radar side lobes and why they are important in military radars. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. So, radar side lobes, even a cursory search on Google returns a long list of links and as you see from these titles every time we speak about side lobes is about the reduction of the side lobes so apparently the side lobes are important if they are not there also if you keep track of the press releases of the ma equipment manufacturers you will realize that when they talk about radar at some point will come up that the new antenna has very small side lobes so yeah what are side lobes to understand what they are we need to understand what antennas are so antennas are the component of the radar that actually emits or receives the electromagnetic energy. A road antenna is omnidirectional, that is a myth uh, in, with a circular pattern around 360 degrees. But a radar antenna is directional, it actually emits a narrow beam of electromagnetic radiation and that's the key for creating a radar because I am sure you are familiar with the principle of the radar. You have an apparatus, an antenna, that actually emits this kind of electromagnetic radiation when the electromagnetic radiation hits a target, and typically in our case we are talking about a plane flying, then part, a very small part to be honest, of this electromagnetic radiation comes back to the radar. Well, we know the direction that the radiation is emitted, we know the time, or we can calculate the time that the radiation took from going from the antenna to the target and coming back, so we know the distance. However, things are never as easy as they seem. If we draw a diagram of the energy density emitted by a directional antenna like a radar antenna against the azimuth we see that the emission of the antenna is more like the one that you see in this drawing rather than a narrow beam what you have is generally a main lobe which is many decibels 10 20 30 decibels higher than the side lobes which are secondary areas of emission of the antenna in general, an antenna emits a, a main lobe in a preferred direction, but also emits energy in other directions. This diagram, by the way, is no real antenna. It is just a generic diagram that I'm drawing to explain the concept. The reason why the emission of the antenna is like this, we are not covering. For our purpose, it is enough to say that this is connected with the geometry of the antenna. It is not possible to build an antenna that emits strictly just in one direction. Now let's try to see why the reduction of the side lobes is important. The first thing to understand is that the sensitivity of the antenna is the same or has better, has the same pattern as the emission of the antenna. That is, a signal coming from the direction of the main lobe will be picked up even though it's very weak. But if you have a side lobe and maybe a large side lobe, a signal coming from the side lobe direction will be picked up as well. Now, since we know the direction of the echo, the direction of the target, from the position of the antenna, from where the antenna is pointed to, we have no real way of telling between the signal coming from the main lobe and the signal coming from the side lobe. This is not entirely true. This happens in pretty basic apparatuses. 
there are plenty of ways to reduce the side lobes even because there are a lot of research has been applied to this but this is the principle you have areas or better directions where a signal can infer onto the antenna and still be picked up so the obvious problem is that you need to have some measures in place to try to distinguish between a proper echo from the main lobe and an echo coming from the side lobes and this actually adds complexity adds computing power and as we've seen in a few videos before computing power is one of the problems that military raiders had in after the second world war the second problem is that the energy that is going through the side lobes is actually wasted is not really useful can produce this kind of false echoes so the smaller they are the better is the antenna efficiency however the worst consequence of the existence of the side lobes is the fact that if you have a jammer which is aligned with one of the side lobes the jamming signal can actually be received by the radar and yes the jammer can do its job in uh, confusing the radar confusing the radar electronics creating false targets or whatever else often you read that jamming signals can enter the side lobes of the antenna and create disruption and produce false targets or whatever this is what it means they exploit the fact that the antenna is not sensitive only in the direction of the main lobe but also in other directions it's quite obvious that if the antenna was only sensitive along the main lobe let's say one two degrees to three degrees you would need to have the jammer actually aligned with the main lobe to create any problem now this is a very basic explanation electronic warfare is much more complex than this but i hope that now you can understand why radar side lobes are a problem and there is a constant uh, effort a constant fight to reduce them in radar antennas now if you want to know more about how radar homing and missile guidance is working you can uh, go and uh, watch the videos on the screen now uh, i hope you have enjoyed this short video thank you for watching and goodbye